Hey bike farmers, thanks for clicking in. Very fun project today. We have a 1983 Trek 850. This is the first year of production mountain bikes for Trek. All original except for the saddle and the tires. Pretty easy to find an Avocet Touring 1 saddle. It's gonna be really hard to find original tires, but these tires actually look pretty good. Friend of mine picked this up on trade just as a wall hanger a while back. I remembered that he had it and I thought, hey, if I went through and completely restored Bob's 850, wouldn't that make a great video? So here it is. We're gonna tear this thing all the way down to the bearings, clean everything in the parts washer, polish things up. It's got a couple dings on it, so we might even do a little touch up paint, restore this thing back to its original glory. Gonna try to make this one extra chill, extra interesting. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Get started here by removing the seat clamp. It's rusty. I'm gonna add this to the bin of rusty things. I'm gonna put in a temporary post and clamp just to hold it in the stand for now just so I can get the original one cleaned up. All right, let's throw that in the stand. one doesn't really want to come out. There we go. Hopefully this front one's a little easier. Going at it backwards here. Ouch. Oh, dropped a caliper. I think I want to save this housing if possible. It's old Diacomp housing, it's kind of neat. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find matching shift housing. It's gonna be tricky. So for these, there's always the slotted part of the barrel adjuster and then a slotted part of the lever. Let's do that. Oh, dropped a wrench. I'm gonna try to get these shifters off without, yeah, good. Try to get, I don't wanna take these grips off. They're the original grips and I'm just afraid they're gonna crumble apart. I wanna get the shifters off so 
I can de-rust them. You know, this little bit of rust in here, that should come off chemically. Right, we can, we can do better than that. Oh, dropped a wrench. Look at that thing of beauty. That's very cool. That's a cockpit. Big fan of that. Okay, so the chain needs to come off. Now I'm pushing the pin out from this side. I guess it doesn't really matter, but I always push the pins out towards the outside of the bike because it makes it easier to install. I don't know if that made sense. Put that in the rusty bucket. I try to preserve them. They like to break. I have other ones in the drawer if need be. Yeah, doesn't want to come out. Try a little bit of croil. Yeah, if, they, if it breaks in there, it can be really hard to get a wrench on the bolt. There we go. I don't know what it's stuck on, but see if this one comes out a little cleaner. Much cleaner. A little harder to get purchase on it. I have to find a different socket when I crank these back on. Get that washer out of there too so we don't mess things up. Cool Sagino bolt. Well, it weren't on there very tight. Just grabbing both spindles here and pedaling forward. We'll do the opposite to put them on. Sake pedals. I'm double checking for washers. You just don't want to have a washer in there. And the last time I used this wrench, a whole bunch of you asked about it. There it is. Hosan lock ring pliers. All right, when you have grooves opposite one another, you can grab it like that. Now, one other thing you can do is you get it like this, and if you squeeze it really hard, like with two hands, you can adjust the cup, right? So you can get it just where you want it, and then that's a really useful tool. So I uh, found it on Amazon and put an affiliate link in my notes for you. So go ahead, get yourself one. All right, that's coming out nice and clean, but we're gonna leave it there until we get the fixed cup out. Here's another fun tool that I don't get to use very often. I'm not sure I need to use it because uh, the other side wasn't that tight, but yeah, so I don't really need to use it, but this is a Stein tool. That's what we always called it. And it, you can screw it into your spindle. All right. This guy screws down and holds your wrench. All right? See how that works? And then you can unlock it. So you can hit it with a hammer or do whatever you need to do. Didn't need to on this bike, but nice little demonstration of a cool Stein tool that I don't get to use very often, but have one because it comes in handy when you got a frozen fix cup on a bike that deserves a new bottom bracket. It can happen when you're in into these older bikes.
Suntour Montec front derailleur. And these derailleurs look cool, but they're notoriously problematic. And I guess the problem stems from the B spring. B springs in here, not in here. All right, so it's tucked back in the pulley wheel in here. And that, uh, yeah, it causes a lot of problems on a lot of bikes. So not the best drivetrains in the world, but they're cool. You know, early mountain bike tech. We like that. All right, look at this headset apart. I think I'll leave the cups in the frame. It's very tight. You can see it's indexed and I think this headset's been tight for a very long time. Probably end up free packing the bottom down here. That'll smooth things out a little bit if it's not already free packed. Yeah, there's a retainer up here and a retainer down there. Yeah, they're pretty grungy. Just because it's easier to clean the frame, we're going to take these cages off. These screws are really clean, which is great, and they were greased. I think to start the cleaning on this, we start with the power wash. That's gonna take some scrubbing. That's a good start. Citrus degreaser is kind of a light degreaser. Nothing too harsh. It does a pretty good job of getting the real grungy stuff knocked down. We'll flip the frame over and do the bottom cup too. Clean as a whistle. Everything looks pretty clean. Good stuff. So over here on the bench, I'm just gonna do a little preemptive degreasing before I throw all this stuff in the parts washer. I have a degreaser in the parts washer but putting them in somewhat wiped down always helps. You can always wipe it after too. Okie dokes. And take the chain. Throw it in there. Seat clamp, crank bolts, seat clamp hardware. I don't really want to soak the plastic in rust remover, so I think I'm going to do these manually. But I found doing this and then filling it with warm water and letting it sit. So there's quite a bit. I'm just going to use a bunch. 
I'll go get some warm water. Filthy. Okay. All right, 20 minutes at 50 degrees. C. Okay, let's talk about these wheels. So this is a sealed bearing hub, and I'm telling you, that is buttery smooth. And you know, I wanna take it apart because I'm doing a restoration, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I'm gonna leave it because it's just so smooth. Everything's pretty clean here anyway, so. I'm gonna go ahead and do what I can to make it look brand new, but I'm not gonna take it apart. Yeah, I mean, that's buttery smooth. I've got this super dirty rag here, and I'm just gonna kinda work my finger into that hub shell through the spokes and rub it down. Yeah, Sun Tour hubs, these are cool. Clean these spokes. A little bit of power wash on these rims. Just kind of spin around and get what I can. This also kind of pushes the power wash one way and then pushes it the other. It just kind of splashes over to the other side so you can do multiple passes. You can see it squirting out there. And then take your finger around your rag and go in between them and just floss. This kind of polishes up the nipples too. take the soft brush and just kind of try to get it in there. Get some of that dirt and grime, what have you, out of there. It's just a hard place to get with a rag or with your fingers. Lots of wiping, lots of cleaning, lots of iterations. And this rim seems to have some gunk on it that I'm not sure I'm gonna get it off. It looked like, I mean, it was on the fork too and I just can't find anything to get it off and I don't wanna use abrasives. I'm not sure, I mean, it's presentable. It's pretty good. This is a nice, original, lightly used bike, but not absolutely perfect. So we are able to call it good enough at some point. And I think we're gonna call that good enough. I'm gonna dab a little bit of grease on the axles. Get these nuts back on after I give them a good talking to here. Oh, dropped an axle nut. Oh, here's something. So I'm gonna pull this freewheel off and get at the spoke protector and shine it up. Teach you a lesson about your dork discs. These are not dorky. These are very important. They're very smart. So there's a two-prong freewheel tool made for a two-prong freewheel. The important thing here is that you got a good purchase and you don't angle things and you hope it comes off clean. Got it. I think the lube actually helped it. I think the tool came out unscathed. Now, if you see here, look at how bent 
and ground up and nasty. That means that multiple times, many times over the years, this bike has shifted the chain over the freewheel into the spokes and this saved all those spokes from getting ripped off. So it's been doing its job. Now if I had a brand new one of these, really, really nice, super nice alloy, I'd put it on, but everything now is plastic and I got some steel ones over there, I guess. But this one's actually in pretty good shape, so I'm gonna wipe it down. Yeah, it's a Suntour one too. It's a Suntour Japan on it. Pretty amazing. So that's all I'm gonna do to it. You can take a closer look at the hub here. Again, that's buttery smooth and it claims it's sealed, so we're gonna leave it. And we're gonna just clean up the rear wheel just like we did the front. Same sort of deal. So it does have some rust on it. Start with some rust dissolver. Okay, fine, I'll wear gloves. You know, have you ever known anybody that cares so little about themselves? I get a lot of comments about not wearing gloves. And I'm gonna tell you, I think you're right. You're all right. Now, I don't know what the deal is. You know, everybody's like, oh, petroleum products are gonna seep into your skin. And my question is, and then what? Now I suspect that just because the fact that I never, ever, ever remember to do it, I'm thinking that the risk is if you soak petroleum products into your skin, it causes premature cognitive decline. Now I, no, I know that just because of the sheer numbers of things, half of the people watching this right now are dumber than the other half. So you might wanna, you're gonna need to Google cognitive decline, I think, right? Not everybody's gonna understand what cognitive decline means. So anyway, you ever think about that? Exactly one half of any population is dumber than the other half? Well, at least when it comes to wearing gloves in the shop, I am of the dumber half, guaranteed. All right, I think I'm gonna put this in the parts washer and take everything else out and put it in. Mmm, looks like lunch. That was the rust dissolver stuff. There's the parts. All right, actually I have a system for drying this stuff. That's my system. So we're just gonna have to go through and kind of wipe everything down here, but you can see how amazing and clean it comes out. Yeah, even the rust inside those bolts. There we go. Shiny. Shiny, happy crank arm. chain here. Now this is out of the rusting, rust dissolver wash and hot water and I gave it a bunch of rinses and then hit it with some compressed air. You can see it's just kind of a black chain now or whatever, steel chain. I just went and rinsed these off too. But all in all pretty good. Everything's pretty de-rusted and that's a very clean shiny freewheel. So here's all the shiny parts. 
Everything's all cleaned up. Ready to put the bike back together. I think we'll start with the bottom bracket. First step is to get things good and greasy. Good and greasy. It's a little loose. So I'm watching the, the dots. Spinning free. See how the dots are moving? It's still spinning free. It might be a little tight. So then what we can do is Grab a wrench and do it the right way. Okay, so now we're a little loose. It might actually be better to adjust it with the crank arms on, but we can get pretty close here. That felt like a good adjustment. It's pretty good. Okay, I found a Guineer socket here. It helps me get purchase on these crank bolts. Usually crank bolts are 14 millimeter. And these are 15. So I found a replacement Sugino crank cap. I got this one back here is just fine. Okay, we're gonna push it through just so we see it coming out the other side there. Okay, we got a sticky link. You can kind of bend it back and forth. That's pretty good. Actually, I wanna push it through a bit more. Okay, make a little micro adjustment. Yeah, there we go. Now we have a, I don't know if you can see that. It's about the same on both sides. Got some good fresh grease on these posts. Got my brake springs all mixed up, so hopefully we don't run into too much trouble here. I don't really know. I think they are directional of some sort somehow. That feels good that way. It's looking right. Looking to be about the same as the other side. Feels pretty good. Oh, dropped a brake bolt.
Not bad. So something that we got going on here. If you can see the crown race here, it's somewhat pitted. It's a little wavy. Looking at that center line ridge thing. I think if I put in that same old bearing retainer, we're gonna feel that. It's gonna be hard to adjust it. We're gonna free pack the bearings in the cup in the bike. So I'm gonna flip the bike over and start packing. Tube of grease here. Try to put a nice bead of grease all the way around. Okay. Grab the five thirty seconds balls and we'll just start putting them around, drop them all over the floor. This is one of those moments where I wish I didn't have these gloves on. I guess I could take them off, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna embrace the cognitive decline. The petroleum products seep in through my skin and into my mind. It dims my mind. Need a little poker tool here to reconnoiter a couple of them. Well, I think that's pretty good. So you want to have them all the way around and then you kind of remove one. And that's the proper amount of balls here. I think that's perfect. So we'll do that. And then carefully remove it. Look inside there and see how they kind of mushed up over here. I can probably add a couple, maybe one. How about that one? Nice dirty one, fresh off the floor. All right. And I could free pack the top too, but it's not as important. Good and greasy. We got something that's starting to resemble a bicycle again. And I tell you what, this headset feels 4,000 times better. I'm gonna make uh, the adjustment at the end when it's on the ground. So that's good enough for now. I like to get a little bit of grease inside the, whatchamacallits here, the bosses. I think this one goes over here. Sure do we have a lot of grease on everything. Let the Dawn Power Wash take care of it. So this is the first video I'm able to mention it, but for all the stuff I use, Dawn Power Wash, TriFlow, One Step, um, you know, the stuff, the chemicals, whatever. I've created affiliate links. So if you buy it through the description of this video, click on one of those links and buy it, I get a little bit of something something. It's just another way you can support the effort here. I've been getting a lot of comments that people have watched my videos and ordered Dawn Power Wash. I'm like, man, I should get 25 cents for that. It's a small bike. I'm gonna just max the stem out. God, that's a good looking cockpit. Big fan. So I'm gonna do this touch up paint. You can see the rust. But just a little bit of touch up paint on a few spots just to kind of cover that stuff up. A little more clean in here on the bars before I put the shifters back on. It's a very cool stem. All right, get these cables in here. And these 
shifters are great. I've decided to reuse all of the cables and housing. Doing a little bit of lube here. first. easy. So I just work the lever a little bit and that pulls all the slack out of the cable and do it again. See how that is. That's pretty good. I'm just gonna tighten down these shift levers now. Front cable's really loose. Snug that one up one more time. Try a little different method here. Not a whole lot different. I'm just going to use an eight millimeter instead of the screwdriver. about a cable end. That'll roll forever. I don't want to pull this housing all the way out. I'm afraid of the cable fraying and not getting it back in. I don't know if you can read that on there, but that's Diacomp housing. That's kind of neat. It's the original Diacomp housing, so we'll keep it. I couldn't find anything matching. We're gonna need to put the old seat clamp back on to get that brake hooked up. We'll get this old seat clamp off here. Pull this post out. 
Just a bunch of grease all over everything there, hey. Link right there, that's what we need. Well, that looks like a bike, don't it? Works like a bike, walks like a bike, talks like a bike. So these are the Gram Comp hangers. It's the nice die comp on my Ross video, which is really similar to this bike. That was an 83 or an 84, um, but it wasn't top of the line. These were, it was Chinese version of this for the hangers, straddle cable hangers, but these are the nice die comp ones. Pretty cool little detail. This bike has all nice stuff on it, which is really neat, pretty cool. And usually these are pretty hard to get just exactly perfect, but we should be able to clamp it in the same spot it was clamped before. Watch me struggle. Should have hit that with the pliers before I got going this far. This is why those barrel adjusters were out on the levers, because there's no other adjustability. There we go. So, get that in position. So this is just finger tight for now. It's really loose. I'm gonna try a third hand tool, if I can find one. See if I can figure that out here. There we go. Ooh, that's gonna be really close. Feels pretty good. Put a new cable tip on there. Yeah. That's pretty good. I am gonna use this and just pull a little bit out. Maybe a little more. That's quite a bit. That just tightens it up a little bit. Feels a little better. Almost felt a little too tight. Move on to the front. Now I remember this one was a lot shorter, so I have to find its happy home where it wants to live for the rest of its life. Tighten that down enough. Way too loose. Push a little cable through. Try that. That was just a micro adjustment. I think I can try a smidge more and not get myself in too much trouble. Ooh, that was it. That's the spot right there, right? Oh, try it again. That's the spot. Same deal with this one. Turn the adjusters out to make it feel better. Okay. Well, there's not a whole lot to adjust here. One thing we wanna kinda pay attention to is since we know that it was throwing a chain, Make sure that that limit's set. It's pretty good. Man, that's smooth. Pretty shiny for a 40 year old. It's a very neat looking bike. Look at how clean that decal is. None of them are that clean. You see a lot of Trek road bikes from this era, but you sure don't see a lot of these mountain bikes. We get them around here, because I'm only 10 miles from Trek headquarters, so there's a lot of these early bikes that employees ended up with, or, you know, they were popular around here. Nowhere to ride them, really. This one was sold at the Quiet Hut in Whitewater, Wisconsin. That's only like 20 minutes from here. Well, maybe it could use a little 
Yeah, a little bit of tweak into the headset. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Get these water bottle cages back in their home. Ding, trek is done, ding, trek is done, ding, trek is done, ding, trek is done. Well, there you have it. A real piece of American bicycle manufacturing history. The very first Trek mountain bike, the 850 from 1983. This one's gonna be a wall hanger. I'm not even gonna test ride it, don't need to. This is just a pretty bike to look at. This bike is 40 years old, 1983 to 2023. Thank you so much for watching this far. Hey, I'm working on my Patreon. I'm going to have some extras over there. A few options for you for membership. Go check it out. If you just want the YouTube videos, that's fine too. Those are free. But I would suggest subscribing, clicking the like button, and don't forget that notification bell so you and your bike can stay tuned.